you guys are like, oh, hell! What happened? I broke it. I wasn't supposed to be hungry again. Why am I getting hungry again, Dr. Vaughn? What am I supposed to do? My tummy's growling all the time. What am I supposed to do with night cravings? Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Vaughn, world famous weight loss surgeon, author of 13 books. Tonight we are going to talk about hunger after weight loss surgery. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you had weight loss surgery or you thought about having weight loss surgery and you know you went to a seminar and the surgeon said man after you have weight loss surgery your hunger will be really controlled it'll, it'll be gone forever so you said man that sounds great i don't want to be hungry i've struggled with hunger all my life so you have weight loss surgery and then lo and behold a few months after it seems like the hunger comes back and you're like what the heck What's wrong? Did I break my surgery? Was the surgery wrong? Did I get the wrong surgery? Am I doing something wrong? I thought I wasn't supposed to be hungry. I got news for you. That's why you need to share this broadcast, tag people in this video, because there's too much misinformation out there in the bariatric community. Your hunger will not be gone forever. I've done a video called The Truth About Hunger. It's on YouTube. You can find it. Go to my YouTube channel, look up The, the Truth About Hunger, and in that video, I explain a little bit more about it. But tonight, I'm going to give you like really like, like true strategies about dealing with your hunger after weight loss surgery because it will come back now there are people who can go two three four five years and that claim that they're still not hungry but most people will will regain their hunger under a year okay that year that year we call it the honeymoon phase and you have to decide to really pump up your weight loss during that first year that honeymoon period right there are people who claim to wake up hungry from surgery they woke up hungry, right? So there's a, a, a difference in effect with weight loss surgery. Now, I, I like weight loss surgery. Weight loss surgery is great. There are just some myths, okay? One of those myths is that your hunger is gone forever. It is not gone forever. Your hunger is gone for now. It will be back. That bitch will come back. Trust me. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to do about it. Now, there's a truth that I teach my patients, and I need to teach you this, all right? If you haven't heard me say it before, number one, it is, y'all repeat after me, it is natural to be hungry, period. It is unnatural to be full. What, Dr. V? What? That is the truth. So let's try it one more time. It is natural to be hungry. It is unnatural to be full. Why? Think about it. When we were cavemen and cave women running around in our little fur bikinis, because you know that's what Hollywood told us we were wearing, right? <laughs> we were hungry most of the time, weren't we? I mean, why is that? Well, think about it. I mean, it's hard to kill an antelope with your bare hands. You were not killing buffalo and hunting deer. and they, There was no cow. I mean, you, you, can you imagine trying to kill a turkey with your bare hands? Even rudimentary stones and sticks? No, we were hungry most of the time. Our caveman ancestors were gatherers, most part. You know, we ate nuts and berries and stuff that, um, some wild plants that grew, you know. And honestly, they... Um, the protein source, most of their protein source came from small fishes and shrimps and stuff along waters that they could really catch with their hands, right? So it wasn't until much later in the evolutionary process when they learned really hunting with spears. You're talking about the metal age, I mean, some you know stones where they could really sharpen the spears. And even then, it was pretty rare to catch capture big animals so all of these things like the paleo diet it's just misleading you guys that's not how we evolved right so we were hungry most of the time and it was very rare that you were ever really full right so it's natural to be hungry it's unnatural to be full but today's time most Americans most modern people watching guess what they always want to eat till they're full and they never want to be hungry and if you think about it that's all the promises that all the diets you've ever tried have given you 
eat this full bar, drink this powder, it will keep you from getting hungry, it'll make you full faster. See, it's what you think you want because they're trying to sell you a product but it's a misle misleading promise. It just will not happen because that's not the nature of our bodies, okay? So I've said this before. We have a lot of redundant systems, right? Because somebody here is about to comment, but Dr. Vong, that, what about that hunger hormone? What about ghrelin? Hunger hormone. My doctor said the hunger hormone was going to be removed. No, 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 no. There... You know, in 2005-ish, we discovered the hunger. 2005, yeah, we discovered the hunger hormone, ghrelin. But now we're up to about 22, 23 different hormones that are involved in satiety and sense of hunger and that sort of stuff. Okay, it's because our bodies are super redundant. Okay, um, so whatever pills they sell you, powder, shakes, uh, full bar drinks that are supposed to keep you full longer and um, uh, eliminate hunger, those are advertising promises that are just false. It won't work a long time. And the same is true for surgery, okay? It will not get rid of your hunger forever, okay? It will just get rid of your hunger temporarily. And during that time period, you better get your head straight so you can get your food straight. Okay, so let me tell you a couple of things. One thing really quickly. I want to write this in, in blue. Okay, now what is one of the main objectives for why you had weight loss surgery? <laughs> Say, Dr. Vaughn, this is silly. Okay, chances are you're obese, not being judgy, that's what you are. And you were so unhappy, you decided to have weight loss surgery with the promise what? Yes, Dr. V, that you want to lose weight. Yes? In fact, why would you have weight loss surgery and not lose weight? But it happens all the time. People will have weight loss surgery and lose a lot of weight and they regain all of it. Have you seen people like that? Or regain a lot of it, regain 20% of it? I've seen a patient in a consult who had gastric bypass elsewhere two years prior and lost a whopping total of three pounds. She swore to goodness she did not lose any weight. Nothing. I was like, really? Like, did you? You mean you lost a lot of weight and then regained the weight? She says, No, I never lost any weight. That's a surgical technical area error, error most likely. But anyway, the main, <laughs> main goal is to lose weight. Okay, so let me tell you a truth: to lose weight. You just must consume fewer calories. Truth? Amen? Come on. Now, yes, I know not every calorie is the same. A fat calorie is different from an empty carb calorie, which is different from a protein calorie. I get it, and I've done videos on that too. But for the most part, Let's just agree at the very basic science level, to lose weight, you have to um, expend more energy, consume fewer, cons you know what I'm trying to say. You have to have a calorie deficit. Eat fewer calories, burn off more calories than you can, you know, than you consume. But as I've talked before, it's just so hard to burn off calories because excess calories is everywhere in our environment. And one chocolate bar can undo an hour at the gym. And it only takes you 20 seconds, 30 seconds to eat a chocolate bar. <laughs> so relatively speaking, the best bang for your buck for weight loss is going to be food, y'all. Not exercise, okay? You got fat on food. So I want to write that in the comment section, man. Fat on food. Not fat because you didn't exercise. I hear that all the time, right? But it's not true. It's fat on food. Okay. So, in order to lose weight, you must consume fewer calories, okay? Follow me here. If you're going to consume fewer calories, you have to eat less, period. You're going to have to eat less, and this includes amount, and this includes frequency. And yes, it means solid food, and it means and liquid calories. 
So honestly, if you if you used to drink ten sodas a day and you just went down to like nine sodas a day, and you <laughs> you would start losing weight. Trust me. You know that's not, that's just going from ten to nine, not even ten to zero or ten to one. You will start losing weight because of liquid calories. Now, so you have to eat less. Now, in order to eat less, that means you have to allow yourself to get hungry. You have to allow yourself to get hungry. If y'all agree that in order to reduce your fewer calories so you can lose weight, that you have to eat less, if you agree on that, then this means you have to allow yourself to get hungry. No, no, Dr. Vong, they promised me I would never be hungry. No, 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 pay attention to what I'm saying. You're used to eating this amount of food, right? Like this amount of food. So if you want to lose weight, you're going to have to get used to only eating this amount of food. You have to have a calorie deficit. You have to allow yourself to get hungry, okay? Now, why is this important? Because of this. Your body has a bunch of redundant systems. That means you will never, ever, ever eliminate hunger. You will never, ever, ever eliminate hunger. I promise you, I promise you, you will get hungry again. At some point before you die, you will get hungry again. Okay? So if that's true, we need to start having real conversations about how do we deal with that, right? Beyond the bullshit about meal prep and I, meal prepping's fine, that's fine. You if you need a meal prep, weigh your food, blah blah blah. Although those are tactics, those are things to do. I want to get much bigger, much bigger philosophical conversation about like why are we so obsessed with this issue with hunger and cravings and Dr. Vong, I got cravings. Like really, I, like I, I boredom eat, I stress eat, I'm an emotional eater. Really? Like the, that's all the same that's all the same conversation and it centers around hunger right and all of those conversations are because we have just lost our way about what it means to be alive our precious life all right i'll be back with the next tip here in a second this next tip is going to really kind of screw with your brain a little bit here all right here's the question i want to ask you all right who never gets hungry dr vong i don't want to be hungry i don't want to be hungry all right well let me ask you this question who never gets hungry now there's a few of y'all watching who have been following me a long time and i know you better know the answer to this question a lot of people will kind of snarkily say, oh, well, fat people never get hungry because they're always eating. Well, if you talk to obese people, they would argue the difference, that they're always hungry, right? From the skinny person's perspective, like they think the fat person must never be hungry because they're always eating. Like how could you, you just, we just had lunch. Why are you eating again at two, you know? Um, so that's some of the miscommunication. So who never gets hungry, all right? Pay attention. Now, there's only one answer to this question, okay? The answer is this. Dead people. Dead people are the only people who never get hungry. Remember, it's natural to be hungry. It's unnatural to be full. Hunger keeps us alive. Hunger tells us it's time to eat, okay? Now, hold on. I know we have we've created this world where it seems pretty cool to bitch and complain about hungry all the time. But stay with me to the end of this video. I'll make it all come together for you. Okay? So there's this Buddhist teaching. I'm not Buddhist and I don't 
you don't have to be Buddhist to understand this, but Thich Nhat Hanh, and if you don't follow Thich Nhat Hanh, you really need to. He's Vietnamese um, Buddhist. Okay. And he talks about how you should eat, right? And he says, I get hungry. I am happy because it means I'm alive. And that's some of the wisdom I want to impart on you, dear viewer. The way that you start embracing your hunger is this. I am hungry, therefore I am happy because it means I am alive. When we start talking about hunger as being alive versus like fear, now we have major shifts in psychology. Does that make sense? Because I want to tell you, for the most of the patients I've dealt with, hunger for them is a state of fear. Amen? Give me some amens now. You know that's true. You were worried about when your next meal was, what you were going to cook at, for dinner, time to grocery shop, what you were going to feed the kids. These are all things of fear. You were worried about... Um, what you're going to eat at the party, if they were going to have anything healthy at the business meeting, um, what were you going to take on the road trip, uh, what about the picnic, the family reunion, what were people going to say, stare, amen, come on now, food was always a source of fear, it wasn't, it's not comfort, I know we want to say, oh, I'm a comfort eating, I'm stress eater, no, 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 because I've interviewed enough of y'all to understand, you would rather not deal with any of that stuff, and that was one of the promises of weight loss surgery, right? Your hunger would go away, you'd eat a small amount of food, you'd be satisfied, you'd be full, not natural, but you would be full until your next time to eat. And you bought into it. You bought into it because it's the same thing. And Skinny Asian comes along and says, oh, ho, 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 hell no, 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 no. You are living in a perpetual state of fear around hunger. And that's why when the fear, when the hunger comes back after weight loss surgery, you guys are like, oh, hell, what happened? I broke it. I wasn't supposed to be hungry again. Why am I getting hungry again, Dr. Vaughn? What am I supposed to do? My tummy's growling all the time. What am I supposed to do with night cravings? The fear has returned. It's not that the hunger, it's not that the hunger has returned. It's the fear has returned. Woo! Give me some amens on that. Right? Now you're afraid you're going to regain the weight. Okay? That's why this topic is so important. Now, so you need to, how you deal with hunger after weight loss surgery, you need to shift your perspective from hunger as being fear fretful how do i plan for it meal prep uh what what my kids won't eat it my husband won't eat it what will they say blah 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 all that comes from a fear and start to shift it to it's natural to be hungry when i'm hungry i'm happy someone write that in the comment sections now because every single day i promise you if you will start telling yourself this i am hungry i am happy because it means I'm alive. I'm hungry, I'm happy, because it means I'm alive. And do that around the time of your meals, whenever you start to have cravings, that 8 p.m. at night, you don't understand why you're hungry, you're looking for food at 10 at midnight, you're stressed out, you just want something to chew on, but you know it's, you know, it's not head hunger. It's the fear coming back, okay? All right. Was that good? Uh, I'll be back to blow your mind one more time. All right. Tip number three is going to really bring it home for you guys. Home for you guys, okay? Number three. Is it true? What? What, Dr. V? What does that even mean? Dr. V, what does that have to do with hunger? 
So this is the question I want you to ask yourself when you feel like you're hungry, right? And no, I'm not talking, hold on now, don't get ahead of me. I'm not talking about head hunger versus real hunger. I'm talking about both, real hunger too. I want you to ask yourself this question. Is it true? Now, why don't I differentiate between head hunger and real hunger? Well, fucker, because, oh, my first F-bomb, that's pretty good. When you are in the throes of being hungry, are you worried? Are you sitting there going, is it head hunger or am I really hungry? You're not doing that because they both feel the same, don't they? They both cause your bellies to grumble. They both cause you anxiety. They both make you want to start looking. They both make you want to like smack, like chew on something. They both make you want to reach and grab, right? When you are in the throes of it, both head hunger and physical hunger are the same things. Yeah? Amen? Opening up some eyes here. So, when you feel hungry, I want you to ask yourself, is it true? Now, I want to give you a couple more things to expound on this. Is it true? When was the last time I ate? Huh. You understand that I deal with thousands of obesity patients, or have dealt with them, and a lot of times they can't even tell me the last time they ate. They just know they're hungry. Like, I'll even tell you, what'd you have for dinner? What'd you have for lunch today? What, what did we have for lunch? What, what did I have for dinner last night? When was the last time you ate? Uh, I think I had some peanuts at four. Think you did or did you have some peanuts? And then you conveniently, conveniently, not you, but you know, people like you, conveniently forget you had the Snickers bar, you had the drive. Listen, I used to, I interviewed a patient during, well, I didn't interview her, during group. She admitted that when she was obese, and she wasn't super big. She was only about 250, 260 pounds. You know, BMI was about 42, 43, not, not super big, right? She admitted that she used to go through um, pizza place, pick up two pizzas, right? And um, eat one of them on the way home, like a medium-sized pizza, eat it on the way home, throw away the box and everything, come home with only one box of pizza, and then serve that to her husband and kids, and she wouldn't eat. She'd say, oh, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. And so the husband was always like, I don't know why she's 250 pounds. She never eats. No, you never see her eat because she ate the pizza on the way home. But if you talk to the doctor or if she went to the doctor or the weight loss expert for help, they would both tell the same story. I don't know why I'm 300 pounds. I don't know why I'm 250. I never eat. Well, that's a convenient misremembering. <laughs> convenient storytelling. And I'm not saying everybody who is obese does this sort of stuff, but a lot of people do. And at some point, you got to fess up to it. There are a lot of y'all, and just comment if it applies to you. You got food hidden next to your bed. You got food in your bedroom and your panty drawers. You got food inside your glove compartment. You got food inside the little compartment next to the driver's seat. You got food hidden in your desk drawers. Right? You got people bringing you things that you just don't count, like Starbucks, for example. You get two or three Starbucks frappe, latte, mocha, schmoka thingy. And you don't count those as calories. Does this make sense? And you used to have an Easter basket full of candy, and now it's gone. Can't let it go bad. I mean, a lot of people sit there and say, boy, their Girl Scout cookies are gone. They eat the whole box. At some point, you've got to start admitting yourself to this, right? And the, one of the most powerful questions is, when was the last time I ate? Okay. I have another concept that's going to blow your mind. Why three meals a day? Have you ever thought about this? 
Why the fuck do we eat three meals a day? Whoever said we needed to eat three meals a day? Where did this notion even come from? My, my nutritionist said it. My dietitian said it. Like, you got to keep your metabolism up. You got to eat five, five small meals a day. You got to. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's not how we evolved. Remember, cavemen and cave women were hungry most of the time. We, they, hell, they didn't eat three meals a day. They ate whenever they could. This whole notion of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, where did it come from? I'm going to tell you. It came around the 1850s. Why? Because they started trying to sell you food. Started trying to sell you food. Before then, you didn't eat three meals a day. A lot of people were lucky to have one meal a day. Isn't that true? If you were a serf in the Middle Ages, you didn't eat three meals a day. You're lucky if you ate one meal a day. All you people who watch Game of Thrones, those people aren't eating three meals a day. In fact, it's the opposite. The poor people are barely eating. They'll go days without food. And it's the two or three wealthy people, kings and queens, that have food spread out whenever. Why three meals a day? This is a social norm that was forced upon us. Hmm? And now we're starting to like, like, fuck, wake up to this notion. And not only did they sell you on three meals a day, they then sold you on an afternoon snack. And then they sold you on a mid-morning snack. And then they sold you on a late night snack. Now Taco Bell's open 24 hours a day. The drive through is open 24 hours a day. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, what? And then I was a little kid. And then... You know, um, Olive Garden started doing endless pasta bowls. You can have all the pasta you wanted, right? What? Why? Why? They're trying to sell us this product, okay? So, now why am I asking you this question, okay? It's because I want you to get back to this question. When was the last time I ate? When was the last time I was eight? When was the last time I ate? Okay. Which leads me to this very important question you have to ask yourself. Have you ever really, really, really been hungry? Because I'm going to tell you, if you have breakfast at 9, you have a snack at 10.30, lunch at 12, 12.30, snack at 4, dinner at 6, snack at 8, I'm going to tell you, most of your life, you've never really, really, really been hungry. Now, there are some awful stories out there, and I've heard them, and, I, and I've experienced them myself, right? So if you're new to me, or you might not know, I'm not American. I'm an actually Vietnamese immigrant. So Memorial Day, you know, we just had Memorial Day. It's remembering all those people who lost their lives in war. And I lost a lot of family members during the Vietnam War. And I'm one of those Vietnamese refugee kids escaped Vietnam in the middle of the night on a boat with a bunch of people, ended up in a ref refugee camp in Thailand. We were there for six months. And while we were there for six months, I'm going to tell you, there were no fat people. If they started off fat, they didn't end up fat. Why? There was a very scarce amount of food. We were given some handouts and rations on a daily basis, but boy, it didn't go very far. Um, you did what you needed to do to trade and exchange and I was a little kid I was only like five years old but I remember my daddy made me go around and collect cigarette butts so he would save the tobacco and re-roll it sell that so we'd have some money for food da 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 you know what I mean I'm not telling you that to feel bad for me I'm just telling you that because I understand man we went days without food so 
have you ever gone days without food? And yes, I know there are people who grew up really poor. I've had patients who used, who used to have to dumpster dive for their food. I've had patients who were homeless. I've had patients that, you know, have experienced hunger. But they're pretty few and far in between. Most of us, if you live in a modern society like America, Australia, England, most of us, we can just pick up a phone or dial on it. We don't even have to pick up the phone. Just my phone, like Uber Eats, and they'll deliver me food. Have you ever really, really been hungry? Now, why am I asking this? Let's say you just, out of an experiment, decided to fast. Now, intermittent fasting is really hot right now. And people always ask me about intermittent fasting, and I've done a video on that, and yes, it's fine. But in intermittent fasting, real quick, you go without no meals, no major meals, for about 16 to 18 hours. That's it. Basically, you're skipping breakfast. So if you have dinner at 6 p.m., skip breakfast. And by skip breakfast, I mean all you do is drink water, Maybe a little bit of coffee, but don't be doing like butter and bulletproof shit. But just drink a lot of water and then have a late lunch at like one. You've done an intermittent fast. That's all intermittent fasting really is for the most part. Now, the different types of intermittent fasting. Now, I'm asking you this question because a lot of people, when you start to think, like you say, hey, go 18 hours without eating, they will freak the shit out. Like, what? I. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Like, I, I've got to eat lunch. I, I, man, I'm telling you, if you struggle with it afternoon, like snoozies, like at four, you're kind of groggy, or two, you're kind of sleepy, skip lunch, and you're going to see you're much more alert skipping lunch. Now, that's a different video, different conversation, um, and, I, and I've done other videos on that you can find on YouTube. But for this conversation, okay, have you ever really, really, really been hungry? If you're not willing to go 18 hours, you've never really been hungry. Now that's 18 hours, okay? What if you went two days? What if you went 55, 60, 75, 80 hours without eating? Dr. Fong, I would die! No, you would not die. See, that's another myth, right? Is that... I'm going to starve to death is a myth. Now, listen to me very closely because I grew up really poor. So I say this with a lot of love and I'm not judging. There are people who go hungry every single day in America, Australia, in modern developed societies. I'm not talking about rural, like India, Africa, parts of that. You do not starve to death in America. In developed countries, you do not starve to death. People do go hungry, go to sleep hungry, though. But no one starves to death in a modern society, okay? That's just a myth that we keep perpetuating. So, have I ever really, really been hungry? In fact, one of the reasons why I recommend patients at least try or read about or learn about intermittent fasting is just to prove to yourself, oh my God, I went 18 hours and I didn't die. <laughs> I just did it. I just didn't. I didn't die. It was okay. I have control over food. I had control over my hunger. It was no big deal. What, is, what the fuck is everyone so worried about? What's my family all up in arms about? Because I didn't make breakfast. Because a breakfast of pancakes and waffles and donuts, you're better off not eating it. Does that make sense? But this m mental shift when you say, Oh my God, I skipped a meal and I didn't die. I skipped a meal and, and I didn't gain weight. You start breaking up all these myths because here's another one. You can live, how long can you go without eating? How long can you live without eating? You can live six to seven weeks, even eight weeks, six to eight weeks without food. Now, how long can you go without water? People do sit out. Mahatma Gandhi would sit at six to eight weeks. You know, concentration camps, refugee camps like what I was in. Six to eight weeks without food. They've shown that. Now, how long can you go without water? Let's say you're lost in a desert. 
How long can you go without water? Three to four days, depending on what you're doing. So, which one's more important? Food or water in terms of your survival? Water! But obese people, so many of them hate drinking water. Dr. Vong, I hate water. I hate the taste of water. Water doesn't have a taste. You're used to this flavor of diet sodas. Water is much more important to you than food. But yet people say, I'm going to starve to death. Dude, we got to quit saying this shit. And then we wonder why hunger comes back. It's not natural. You need to drink water. You're abhorrence of water is part of the I almost said fucking problem it's part of the big problem you gotta quit abhorring water you are 70 percent water you keep saying I don't like water means I don't like myself subconsciously you don't know it but it's true does that make sense water is much more important in this conversation than food is in fact, you can eat exactly the way your surgeon tells you to, and you can measure out your grams of protein, and you can keep your carbs down. But if you don't drink water, none of that matters. You won't get the results. Water first, food second. Got it? Now, what's even more important than food? How long can you hold your breath for? If you had a... Everyone, one, two, three, take a deep breath. Hold it, hold it. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. How long can you hold your breath for? Answer? Two minutes at the most? So air, how long can you go? Two minutes? Two, three minutes? Some deep sea divers can do ten minutes? Then you're dead. But no one ever says, I choke to death. But people choke to death all the time. If your pimp is choking you, you got about two minutes. Bitch, where's my money? Bitch, where's my money? Right? He's got your head in the toilet because he you pissed him off. You, and your pimp's like, bitch, where's my money? Where's my money? You got two minutes of oxygen before you die. But we pollute our air all the time. We still have people who smoke and burn their lungs. We still burn down our Amazon force. We still drive a block when we could just walk. It's our air. Okay. I got off track. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, if you're really, really, really hungry, now we're talking three to four days. I'm not telling you to do that, but just pretend. Let's pretend you went three or four days without food. Okay. This is important. Now, if you go three to four days without food and you really got really hungry, here's my question. How would that food taste? How would that food taste? Dude, it would be delicious. It would be so amazing. It would be so mind-blowing. It would be the best thing you ever ate, even if it was half rotten, right? It would be delicious. Why? Who's paying attention? Why would it taste so good? Dr. Fong, because I'm hungry. No, 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 no. Go deeper. Why would it taste so good? Because you know it's keeping you alive. Huh? I'm hungry. I'm happy because it means I'm alive. So when I'm really, really hungry, that food tastes so good. Now when that happens, food goes from being fear, hungry. How do I prep the meals? How do I find time to make two meals? How blah, blah, blah. How do I eat healthy? It goes from fear to now it's a life-giving source, right? So, if you do this, food, I want to write this somewhere. Food is a life-giving source. 
food becomes a life-giving source, this is important, not a hunger-killing remedy. Boom! Mm! How good is that? How good is that? If you let yourself really understand hunger, food is a life-giving source. I eat good food. I can afford good food. I cook good food. I buy organic. I, le I read about recipes. I take time to watch cooking videos. I don't just sit there and go, oh, I'm starving. What do I do? Oh, here's a bag of chips. I just eat. No, because now my food, what I eat, is letting me be awesome, is letting me stay alive, is letting me play with my babies, is letting me play with my 13-year-old daughter, is letting me hike with my family this last weekend. The food I eat is the life-giving source that lets me go after my dreams that lets me meet people, that lets me travel, that lets me earn money so I can take care of those I love. When you think of food as a hunger killing remedy, anything will fucking do. Any junk will do. McDonald's will do. Mold will not eat McDonald's. McDonald's will not spoil. Do this experiment. Go buy a hamburger a Happy Meal, and put it on top of your refrigerator, and it will not spoil for years and years and years. It's not food, y'all. When you think hunger, food is a hunger-killing remedy, you will put anything in your mouth. And that's why we struggle with obesity. That's why your weight loss surgery will fail you. And that's why all the diseases will come back. Your diabetes is gone for now, not forever. Your blood pressure is gone for now, not forever. you got to start putting life-giving food into your body, not trying to suppress hunger, because it's natural to be hungry. It's unnatural to be full. And you need that life-giving food so that you can go chase your dreams. I'm Dr. Duck Vaughn, world's number one bariatric surgeon. I'm going to cure obesity with your help. I love you very much. I'll see Hi, you. Dr. Vong here. If you loved that video, I hope you will check out Velocity2020.com. I want to meet you in person. This is my big annual conference in Vegas. It's amazing. It's not just about weight loss surgery, but it's about taking your life up to the next level. You're going to meet the best people, the best speakers, the best audience possible. You're going to really take your life up to the next level. 2020 is all about vision, clarity, and focus. We're going to show you how to find your vision, what you really want to do with your life, get crystal clear, clarity, and then find your laser focus to do what you need to do to have the amazing life that you deserve. Hope to see you there.